movies and uh, everything, right? Right. right. And uh, the TV guide is the TV guide. Uh, people the television voting, movie, right? The television well, shows. Or? That must be people who subscribe to TV Guide voting right. on Probably the shows that are in the TV Guide. Different voting populations. Like the, wow. The Kids Choice Awards by you know. What category? What category did it win in? New our show, best yeah. new hour drama series. Has it? It seems like it's been on in like a year and a half or something. Has it been just? We got a full season in God bless. Yeah, we got a full season. Right, and I get confused with all the replacement shows. There's a lot of shows. It used to be and the repeats actually. Yeah, it used yeah. to be either a show was on for a year yeah. or it was on for two years. But now there's a lot of shows that've been on like a year and a quarter. Yeah, yeah. A year and yeah. a half. Yeah. Very true. And they swap and test times, and then when they're filling gaps, they put in reruns at different times. So it gets confusing. You have to keep up on it. This is uh, Sammo Hung, who's like this uh, big Asian uh, martial arts star. Although you wouldn't know it if you saw him. He, he looks pissed off, but he, he looks like he just looks like a he is uh, pissed off. fat, That's drunken me. Oriental guy. But he kicks a lot of ass. Oriental. That's what they call him. <laughs> is, that, is that politically correct? Throws the kicks over the head and uh, the whole nine yards. Mm -hmm. And uh, now uh, Arsenio Hall is on this show. And uh, who else? Who, what's the we female? got Kelly Who and Tom Wright and myself, of course. And. Uh, it's a, it's an interesting combination, let me tell you. Kelly, was she on Nash Bridges? That's correct. Right. Okay. Now um, it's uh, it's all coming uh, back to me. And you know these. Uh, I I don't know how it's worked this way, Jerome. I don't know if you've been paying any attention, <laughs> but these sort of. Um, Kick-ass, um, sort of. They're they're violent, but uh, with a comical edge to them. People aren't getting, you know, it's not blood and guts everywhere. These are taken over Friday, uh, actually Saturday nights. Huh. It's um, uh, Walker, Texas Ranger has uh, been doing well for a while. There's a, a long few, while, like, you know, eight nine years. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. We, did you know that Chuck Norris has had a successful, a very successful TV show on the air for like uh, eight, nine years, Drew? Uh, did I know he had a TV show? You know what Chuck Norris is? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you thought he was selling geese, right? <laughs> Through mail order. But uh, for some reason, Saturday night is the uh, kind of bust them up. There's kind of kind of lighthearted bust them up night. Absolutely, yeah. There's a lighthearted uh, uh, nine o'clock show, and uh, I think eight, nine, and ten. Yeah, and we're doing well. And how it is, is it? Is lighthearted? How's Samo's way? English? Uh, have you watched the show? Yes. What do you think? Well, <laughs> it's good, but he didn't speak any English before the show began. He didn't speak uh -huh. a lick of English. Not a lick to my knowledge. I, I just learned that recently, so I take my hat off to him. He's doing really, really well. And do they, because it's so hard to learn stuff when you're older, especially after you've been kicked in the head a few times. I mean, stuff yeah, just absolutely. doesn't stick. Yeah, yeah. But do they just give him the lines and he remembers the lines? Yes. Uh, what's like the word I'm looking for here, Drew? Uh, reciting? Re Paris. Just recite paraphrases the. Uh, yeah, like I know the Selena. song. Una Palola Blanca. Right. Right. You have no, idea, <laughs> I have no idea. I could be saying my mother's a whore yeah. in Spanish. <laughs> All right. I don't think that's exactly right, but it's uh, it's close. Yeah. It has something to do with a white bird. Uh, Ann told me before the night, uh, or before the show began uh, tonight, and I've just been seeing little bits and pieces about this uh, tragedy in Colorado. Uh, some guys came into a high school, and there's high like kids, 22 yeah. to 25 people dead, and so on and so forth. I think we're in we the are, city. We are very much there. That it that it that this tragedy took place in Jeff, so, Jeffco County and. Uh, I guess Columbine, where the Columbine High School, where this went down, will be closed tomorrow. But the other two high schools will be open tomorrow, and we'll have uh, extra counseling available. Apparently, if people want to talk to somebody. And if, if people want to call in from that uh, region and yeah, uh, we'd take love a load to, off, we'll yeah, talk to you. We'd love to hear what's going on, what this is all about. Uh, you know, you're not going to get the real story in the press, right? So here's a place where we can really share about what these kids were all about, what really happened. I, I'm going to put a show example. I'm going to put my vote on. Uh, uh, you know, physical uh, physical abuse plus speed equals extreme violence. Yeah, yeah. plus uh, plus the uh, re uh, availability of uh, weapons. automatic weapons, which yeah, I still think is a very important and positive thing in our culture, and everyone should be able to have one. It's just it's 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 tough when automatic weapons get a black eye this way. Uh, also, these things always seem to take place in a place where they couldn't happen. Where it wasn't supposed to happen. Then we start the newscast with it wasn't supposed to happen here. It's always some small town up north or some little village in, in Colorado yeah. or something. Mm -hmm. You know, when I have kids and I'm going to roll them in school, 
I want the principal to tell me, yeah, there's like a 50-50 chance something pretty hairy could go on here. Then the kid's in. If I hear nothing could happen, it's not Get supposed to there. happen, I'm yanking them right out of there. Because and all of this stuff seems to happen where it's not supposed to happen. Isn't that the point in the last 10 years we've been saying uh, who would have expected, yet that's where it happens. Isn't that the that's point? That's where the stuff happens. That's, right. That's a point in life, too, in general, isn't it, when you least expect it? Uh, right. Yeah. Well, people compensate when they expect the stuff. The thing that's yeah. weird is we're always talking about the violence in the schools in the inner city on the south side of Chicago and in uh, south central L.A. and anything with the south in it before a uh, big metropolitan city. But there seems to be a few stabbings and a few things. There's uh, sort of isolated stuff. But the big-time massacre stuff seems to go on in the smaller right. areas. That's mm -hmm. right. All right, so uh, I don't know what lesson we've learned, but uh, we want to talk to some of those people if they're listening tonight. Christine? Yeah. You're 22. Okay, I just want to say I love the show. Thanks. And I just have a couple of, of comments. First of all, all of the Jefferson County schools, I guess, are closed tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And um, some of the other schools around Denver are also closed, the high schools, middle schools. And That's not we're hearing. We, we got a call from our affiliate in Denver, and they're saying that the two... Jeffco schools that are not Columbine will be open. Oh, they are because I just watched the news about five minutes ago, and they're saying all Jeffco are going to be closed. Yep. Okay. So Where are you watching anyway, the news? What's that? Where are you calling from? I'm calling from actually in Boulder, but I have family lives in the Littleton area. How it's far is um, that from Boulder? It's about a 30-minute drive. It kind of stretches around the outskirts of Denver, so I mean, it's a definitely a suburb of Denver. Yeah. Wow. Ugh. And yeah, uh, real close to the mountains, sort of by Golden. And oh my God! It's it's God's country, you know. Up there, yeah. Up there. I mean, it's, you you really would. God must have been out of town. It, you mean that's like the core stuff? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love those commercials. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm heartbroken, Drew. Oh, this is horrible. And so you're saying that the schools are will all be closed tomorrow? Just in the Jefferson County area, which is where Littleton is. And then I guess a threat was called into a Denver high school, so they're closing that high school and some oh, of the other. Nice. Isn't that nice for people? Threat. What's that? A bomb threat or something? Um, they really wouldn't confirm it on the news. They said just the superintendent decided to close those schools and. Isn't that nice when when S goes down, somebody else has to sort of add to it, get in the get in the midst of it. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're just afraid of copycats, I guess. Yeah, well, but it but it boggles it's... the mind. I mean, in 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 a way, I want those people dealt with just as harshly is the other people, the people that actually perpetrated the crime. You know, once in a while, oh, it it. Uh, I know that I'm I'm jumping a little bit here, but. Um, I was watching this uh, Polly Klaus uh, story, and, you know, when she was abducted, you know, she was dead immediately, practically, but they didn't know where she was for many weeks, and they had a hotline number, oh, right. and a girl called in saying that she was Polly, and the FBI traced it, and the dad, like, talked to her and swore it was her, and they went to the house, and it was some kids screwing around. Mm -hmm. I mean, imagine that. Some poor girl. Your daughter's been abducted. She's been, you know, raped and killed up in the mountains and pull out of, pulled out of her room at knife point, and you got some 14-year-old effing around. Hey, it's me, Daddy. Mm. <laughs> you, you, you know what I mean? I mean, can you imagine? Well, this, is, this is all the stuff of mob mentality, right? This is this is the the most primitive piece of humans gets yeah. gets resurfaces yeah. sound like definitely this. man at its worst. Yeah. Uh, Christine, is that why you're calling? Yeah, mainly. But I just wanted to. I sort of had a question for Doctor Drew, and I don't know if he can answer it, but mm -hmm. um. I just know that on TV, the kids that were that perpetrated it were described as outcasts, um, some sort of trench coat mafia. Mm -hmm. um, and it seemed like they were by, described by other students that they were sort of teased, you know, and excluded from a lot of the social groups at the school. And I was wondering, you know, all groups at school get teased. Jocks get teased. Popular people get teased by people that aren't popular. Everyone gets teased, you know. It's like, why did these kids take it to such an extreme, and why do some other kids just deal really well with it? There are a lot of theories about the origins of violence, and you can go into any bookstore today and get... There's one called Ghosts from the Nursery or Ghosts in the Nursery that goes into a lot of detail about this. It's a newer book. Uh, it's pretty involved. Uh, for me, I sort of play the odds, and I usually bet on a sprinkling of amphetamine. Amphetamine is the drug of violence, and when I see wild violence, I just assume that drug's there. Got a fringy group, eh, probably doing drugs. Yeah. It's not like, yeah, probably. No one ate a pot brownie and yeah. then went in there and yeah. shot up the school. Yeah, and they, and they may already have been prone to violence. You sprinkle in amphetamines, you get extreme violence. All right. Uh, Sean. Yeah. You're 20. You're on Loveline. Hey, how you guys doing? Good. Yeah, I'd like to give my uh, condolences 
to the families of uh, the lost ones over there in Canada. How about the kids that had to see, watch this go down? They're right in front of a bunch of the kids. Excuse me? A lot of the high school students had to watch this all go down, their friends right in front of their eyes. Right. Yeah, I, I mean, mean uh, that was so for them. Oh, how freaked would you be for how long? <laughs> yeah, you talk about PTSD. And listen, all uh, post-traumatic uh, stress disorder. All you kids are uh, freaked out because you saw your uh, dad uh, banging away on your mom once when you were 11. Just think about this. Y you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, a lot of people use a, have a lot of reasons to be freaked out, but this is a bona fide reason to be freaked out. And, you know, you're in a public place and stuff. I mean, how could you even sit around an airport or bus depot or something without thinking something was going to go on? All right. Mm. All right, Sean. What's going on? Yeah, uh, my question was uh, directed towards uh, Dr. Zhu about, I hear a lot on the show that if, uh, you know, a younger man gets involved with, uh, like, uh, a 20 year old guy gets involved with a younger woman, there's something wrong with them. So it's a my question. Well, well, a 20 year old man? Well, yeah. How, how, how young is the woman? Yeah, how young is the woman? Excuse me? How young is the woman? Okay, it's. If a if a 18 year old, uh, I guess say 23 year old gets involved with 18 year old and 23 year old, yeah, we probably wouldn't have a problem with that. To, with the woman as young as 16. Mm, at 16, we we'd start to worry about it a little bit. Start to worry about it. Yeah, the 23 year old and the 16 year old. Well, yeah, well. <laughs> in, that, in that area, man, I, I guess C three like Saran wrap, son. <laughs> Who are you dating? And how old is she? Well, no, I just talked to us, John. I just heard on the show before that something there's they're predators, and I just wanted. Who are you dating? I'm not dating any anyone. But, uh, any old women? That's for sure. I'm just called to find out why would someone be disturbed just because you know they're interested in, in someone that well, young. What's your plan? You got a plan for no, your penis? I've just heard it so many times that. that All right. Have we been Have we been right? Have the guys turned out to be screwed up? Well, no. It's just that. I, no, no. You know, have I'm the guys not turned out to be screwed up almost every time we have brought that up? <laughs> have they not? All right. Listen, I'm like, done arguing with uh, Mr. Hypothetical over here. It's guilty. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> My God, I'm uh, I'm convinced he's now having uh, sex with a fetus. <laughs> it started at 16 and dropped like uh, three years with each stammer. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, God, <laughs> guys can't play cool. Listen, everybody, guys included, when you're lying or you're backpedaling, here's the plan: don't say anything. You know what I mean? I mean, don't get into that. <laughs> That just makes you seem guilty, doesn't it? Just take Stand a Stand by your story. That's Stand right. Stand by it. Get one, stick with you. <laughs> You're coming up with new and inventive ways to make noise. Steve? Yeah. You're 20. Yeah. Louis Mandalore's here from Martial Law. How are you, Steve? What's up? I'm good. Um, How old is she? I'm sorry? No, I'm kidding. I'm sorry. No, um, I'm a long-time listener. I'm glad I'm, you know, in a way, I'm not calling about my own problem. I live about 15 miles out of Littleton. Mm. And my comment is, I am... You know, Adam, you've been talking about this for a while. I'm just fed up with this society. I am so sick to death. I mean, I saw the president come on today, and he gave his usual pray and grieve speech, and this is a guy who should be saying, what is going on? Yes. And, uh, Steve, absolutely. You know, and I'm just, in the press, they had a helicopter, all right? A local news station had a helicopter, and they had a real up-close shot, and the pilot's saying, we're getting this shot not because we're breaking FAA regulations, but because we got this high-tech technological camera. And it's like, what does that matter? Yeah. Wow. I'm, so, I'm so angry. With well, what, what kind of weapons did these kids have, do you know? I, I haven't heard for sure, but I think they were assault weapons. And there's a couple of rumors here. One is that one of them, his dad, owned a gun shop. Uh, I don't know for a fact. I don't want to throw anything out there. Right. Two is, the other rumor I heard is one of those kids drove a black BMW. And I'm, I'm, I'm getting tired of, you know, and the other thing is, is Wait, supposedly they, they did it in coalition with today being Adolf Hitler's birthday. That's nice. Oh, this is Adolf's birthday? Is that a fact? Yes. And... You know, I just want the skinheads eliminated. I'm sorry, because I'm, you know, I'm a white Caucasian, and I'm going to be walking down the street someday, or my kid is going to be walking down the street, and they're going to get popped off. Well, and now we're, we're going to get a million calls, Steve, now from skinheads who are not racist and not violent. There's a lot of loving, nurturing, wonderful skinheads well, no, out there. That's a whole different, different, different. No, no, it's not. But listen. But listen, I, I wonder why we don't talk about the real, I mean, this is, again, this is your roach theory. 
I mean, right. Why why worry with about smashing the roaches you see running around? Why don't we go to the nest? The nest. You're exactly right. Why yeah. don't we as a society come to grips with this crap and deal with people as they really are? Exactly. Why do we have to protect our little political territories? Why can't we just capitulate and get with it? You're not. I, I suspect you're going to hear more about the reality of this shooting on this show tonight than you will ever hear again. Yeah, yeah well, the, the president just gets up there, or whoever just gets up there, and it's just a bunch of lip service. Our prayers and condolences go yeah, out more to the BS, grieving families. God willing. But first off, uh, I guarantee Clinton will work uh, God in 15, 16 times mm -hmm. into his speech. Meanwhile, here's a guy who's getting sucked off while his wife's in the next room. He's shoving a cigar up some chick. He doesn't believe in God uh, any more than you and I do. He really doesn't. He's, if he does... He's a goddamn fool. He is the biggest fool in the world because he's going straight to hell for his activity. There's no way Clinton believes in God. If he did, he wouldn't carry on the way he carries on. He wouldn't lie the way he lies, and he certainly wouldn't be getting sucked off in every room of the White House. He doesn't believe in God, but he likes to work God in a lot. And he talks about condolences and heavy hearts and you know flags at half mass. And this is a bunch of lip service. He really should be talking about why these weapons are available, why people can get their hands on them, and who's having these kids yes. and what kind of monsters are being created out there and what kind of what are we going to do about these parents that create these kids and who's giving them trench coats these young kids and well, well, uh, then who and tolerates Steve. that hey yeah. they're allowed to express themselves bs right no right they're not no there's certain things that you just can't be allowed in our society no uh, but it's just a bunch of uh, grieving and uh i, I really I'd, I'd really like to hear uh, clinton's comment on it and get the old god meter out and see how many times he did a uh, god willing or with the lord's prayers or a bunch of other nonsense please Please, God. <laughs> why, why even work God into a bizarre tragedy like this? You know what I mean? It's, sort of, it's got to be offensive to God. I mean, look at it this way. Let's say there was a God. Um, you think uh, they got a bunch of guys going in and blasting the hell out of a bunch of innocent co high school kids? Oh, what kind of God is that? So this is kind of offensive that he works God into the whole thing. This is ironic. It's like, well, God wasn't around during the massacre, but now he's back. And uh, and we should all that we should all heed his warnings. Isn't isn't it the way out? I mean, isn't it? It's my opinion. I guess it's always the way out. You know, God will look after it. You know, God bless. Yeah, uh, it's always the way out. It's well, always it's it's easy for him. It's it's an easy way of not dealing with the issues. Absolutely, the the yeah. issues are you know um, automatic weapons. The issues are screwed up kids. They're violent families. It's, Do something about it. Talk about that. Yeah. Yes, that's what needs to be discussed. All right, we'll uh, sell one of these calls, and then we'll take a break so I can finish eating my chicken, which is uh, turning into jerky before me. Tracy? Yeah. You're 22. Yes. What a great night for my question. All right. What's uh, going on? Not much. I listen to you guys a lot. Um, my question I have is kind of for both of you. I want to start off by asking Dr. Drew, is it not true that when you're a child and you're abused, um, you feel as if it's your fault or yes. you've done something wrong? That is some, sometimes a big, uh, is often a part of the syndrome yes. yes depending on the age especially right. but right. certainly okay. it is so um based on that i have kind of an argument for or against adam is when i hear you saying a lot when you're in power that that's right um, <laughs> you're going to forbid people who were abused as children to have children of their own Who said that? What's, said that? what's your name tracy, tracy? i want to keep an eye on you <laughs> you put her on your list tracy. she's on the list yeah. now where are you calling <laughs> from tracy what's that what quadrant <laughs> a broken Excuse me. Uh, where are you calling I, from? I mean, where are you calling from? Virginia. Hold on a second. Virginia? Okay. All right. Um, the Roanoke area? Sure. <laughs> okay. Norfolk? Okay. Nowhere. We can find it. Uh, how long are we going to stay on the line with this? Okay. Hey, listen, Tracy. Yeah. Um, I don't want people that were... Um, yeah, I prefer uh, people that were abused uh, didn't have kids, just as a rule of thumb, unless they've got some counseling. There you go. Well, That's my rule. You have to have, is here's the deal. If you were abused for two years, you have to have six years of counseling. It's a three to one margin. One year, three years, and of course, uh, ten years, that's 30 years. How about, how about counseling, counseling for two years leading up to a child? And then through the child's first six years of life. Yeah, because here's the deal. If somebody beat the crap out of you consistently and then you have a child, there's a very likely chance that you're going to beat the crap out of your kid. I have kid. an argument to that, though. Go ahead. I, I 
was abused as a child, and uh, I, I went through everything. I was physically abused, not sexual, but physically abused, verbally abused, and I was neglected. When I was 16 years old, I had anorexia as well because of it. I was right. four pounds, and I'm five foot eight. Right. I almost died. How much did you my, weigh? Oh, 84. 84, wow. 84 pounds, five foot eight. I turned my own life around. I got away from my parents. Yeah. I went to um, my gym. I started working out. I became very educated on nutrition. I'm a uh -oh. certified personal trainer. I started putting myself through junior college after graduating high school when I missed 36 days of high school my senior year because I had to keep a roof over my head and still graduated on the honor roll, put myself into a junior college to become a physical therapist. Tracy, I, I'd say two things to that. What? One is fantastic. I mean, that's that's spectacular. But this this sort of house you're building this this environment you're building is still defensive and you're going to have to someday deal with the emotional issues that are that are sort of underlying this and that's why we advocate some kind of treatment when people have been through this but just keep you know stay in balance keep an eye on yourself it's fantastic that you've been able to do this and and let me show you give you another piece of data and wait and that is no. the, the probability Good. the prob then. the probability of abusing if you've been abused is 60% so that's not 100%. Well, it's, listen, it's as a woman, you don't do the kind of abusing that a male does. You're just a compensator, and you end up screwing up the kid anyway, in your own way. I mean, here's what's going on with you, Tracy. God bless you. You're taking care of business, yeah, but great. you're still a little screwy, right? No, I, I have great, I have good relationships when I date, but I know that I'm not ready right now for, you know, any kind of commitment or having to. I love children so much. I was a nanny here and there for jobs. I do a great job. I have one. All right, all right, all right. So it feels like a lot of compensation going on in your life to me. Be that as it may. Be that as it may, you you pulled yourself up by your own bootstraps, and that's and great. God bless you. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think what uh, Adam's referring to is generally not many people pull out of it as good yeah. as you yeah. did. Let, let, yeah. Now's the time to bring God into the conversation. <laughs> God bless you for doing that. God bless, bless you. you. All right, we'll uh, take a little break. Louis Mandelars here oh, from yeah. Martial Law. Yeah. I'm going to uh, finish my uh, Pollo Loco. I might help you there. Uh, I don't oh, you want, you want a tortilla? Right yeah, and uh, we'll be back after this. You have five seconds. Love line with Adam Cole and Dr. Drew. Two. Back in a minute. One. It's a love line. I'm Adam Parola. That is Dr. Drew. L Louis Mendelar is here. Yes, he, sir. He is from the uh, fabulous Martial Law, which is on Saturday nights, 9 o'clock, CBS. There's uh, some good, light-hearted ass whooping on this show. Well put, uh, Adam. I would call it uh, a good, light-hearted ass whipping. Exactly, yeah. yeah. With yeah. a lot of somersaults and backflips from the big man. Yeah. And it's like a Chinese guy and a Japanese guy and a uh, uh, and a black guy. And there's like one of everything. And a Greek guy. A Greek guy. Right. He's playing an Italian. Yeah, the colony, right? no, TV's great because there's, there's, there's white guys and there's black guys, but whenever there's a force, like uh, where there's cops, there's always one of everything. Yeah, it's like an American Indian guy, and it's an Eskimo. It's all, you know, TV, it's all uh, mimicking whatever has gone before. So Mod Squad was the breakthrough. Right. And everything else has been a reproduction of that. Right, right. But they, there's, there's, a sort of, there's a sort of one of, one of everything. And uh, I like that. There is on martial law anyways. You're right. Right. I never looked at it that way, but it's true, isn't yeah, you it? you got one You've everything. got all the shapes and colors and everything. Now, what's the deal with uh, martial law? You guys you guys shooting now? We're on hiatus. We wrapped a couple of weeks back, and uh, it was a long, grueling year, but it was wonderful. And we're, as you know, TV goes, we're waiting to hear if they want us for the next season. Well, the show's doing well, right? Hey, hey, TV Guide's uh, Martial <laughs> Arts Show of the Year. Absolutely, yeah. But you know, it's a political thing. We we don't. We just have to sit back and wait and see what the next networks decide on doing. And but you know, it it seems to me, and I don't want to sound condescending here, but this uh, like a Walker Texas Ranger 
He's been on the air for, what was it, 27 years now? 28. Chuck, <laughs> Chuck Norris was 11 when the series started. He said he's 50. <laughs> now, and uh, a lot of people don't even know this show's on, but it found a nice slot. It does well, and uh, he just laughs all the way to the bank. Absolutely. Found its people, you know. Found a group of people that watch it religiously. and Right, but it, it seems to me that if you are starting a new show and you're doing a half-hour sitcom and your time slot is Wednesday night, at 830 you got a lot of pressure I mean you got about a 10 percent chance of making it eight uh, just just eight, eight episodes you, you know what Absolutely. I'm saying I don't know what the attrition rate on those things is but they must fall not, pretty not fast good. not good if you can if you can slide into a nice Saturday night gig yeah, get Saturday a, Sunday Friday get a nice yeah. following you can cruise there for a while and then you can parlay into a big movie deal Jennifer hi you're 17 yeah I am um Okay, my question is, um, when I was 15, I um, gave birth to my son, and um, I had toxemia during that pregnancy, and um, I also, um, it was it was a pretty bad pregnancy. And I, um, What is that toxemia, Drew? Preeclampsia. It's a, it's yeah, a exactly. fluid and electrolyte disorder, high blood pressure, fluid retention. Preeclampsia, was that? Preeclampsia something, or toxemia. Something clamp, clamps or, up? Or toxemia. No? Yeah. Um, and... Um, after I gave birth to my son, I, it wouldn't mean probably be about a month, I had an extremely large, um, high, well, high sex drive. Um, and, uh, and Before you gave birth? Huh? After. Oh, after. After, after I gave birth. Um, um, I had him in November, and by December I was probably already having sex. And um, I just it's been going on for, he's 17 months now, and it's going on for a while. And it's usually when I get depressed, I usually go for the emotional um, intimacy with the guys, and they're usually older. Um, fix. You're, you're behaving like an addict. Perfectly addict. normal. Perfectly yeah, healthy. Did something, yeah, you know. <laughs> something happen to you? My answer. Yeah, you know, and um, I, and I got on the Depo Vivera shot, and I took the birth control, and I was wondering, did any of those have an effect to it? Uh, yeah, absolutely. When, when did you take the Depo Vivera? I took it back in April of '98. And um, I started having sex with the older guy, and my mom kind of freaked out. She found out, and she just put me on it. She didn't really yeah. look at this, um, so, you know, side effects. And I got really depressed. Good. Depo Provera, the most wet husband. <laughs> <laughs> America. <laughs> Who are you going to say? The United know. States. You don't have a husband. Maybe she's got a nice boyfriend. Saying, where's the man? Yeah. The uh, Depo Provera usually actually decreases sex drive. Uh, well, so, it didn't for me. And, and, and then maybe it didn't. That's right. And what pill did you switch to then? Um, Orthro tricycling. And those usually increase sex drive. Okay. And I stopped taking those. All oh, right. Hold on a second. I'm growing a vagina, Jennifer. I swear <laughs> to Christ. I swear to God. Uh, boy, she's sep now. Did Jennifer, something happen to you growing Jennifer, up? Jennifer, 17, sounds like she's 29. Yeah. Right? yeah I yeah. mean, oh, I mean, th we're yeah, we're yeah. talking to a 17 year old, everybody. She's a gynecologist at 17 who uh, knows who write a book on uh, infant care. Yeah. And she's 17, everybody. She's been through every every birth control known to man. What is going on there, Jennifer? Where's the husband? Uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> sorry. I didn't mean to insult you. Where's the father of your child? Um, he's, he's around. He's weirder than me. <laughs> he's uh, He has a lot of... Uh, psychological problems himself. He's one of those kind of like devil worshiper, self mutilator. Kind oh, of nice. Yeah, we were. I was 15 when I got pregnant, and he was 14. What happened to you, Jennifer? Um, you know what? Uh, so far that I know, nothing. Really? Um, there, what about the the water supply, the municipal water? Well, there's supply. something, there's some energy here. Where, where did it come from? What water supply? Yeah, he's being funny. How did you get okay. so screwed up if no one screwed you up? You know what? You know what? I don't even know. I mean, I got pregnant the second time I ever had an intercourse. All right. and, uh, Where's your dad? Huh? Your Who's dad? Your dad. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? He's at work. <laughs> All right. Do you, have, do you have any other addictions like uh, drugs, um, you know alcohol? What? Right. Good question. Um, no. I'm, no, I is don't. Is your dad an alcoholic? No, he's not. He's, uh, um, my parents are religious. They're very religious, but other than that, they're, they're, my, my mom uh, suffered from depression. And um, manic, that was really much it. Manic depression? Um, yeah, actually, it runs in my family. All right, so maybe this is part of a manic depressive syndrome, which is yeah, yeah I figured that hypersexuality is part of mania. So you be careful here. You may want to get on some medications, get that biology yeah, taken care. I tried Prozac and I tried Effexor, and they all make me sick. I throw them all up. Well, but if you're manic, I mean, you need to say a psychiatrist. You what are you doing to support yourself? Well, your... I do. I mean, oh. I I used to, and I've gone to like. How are you level. supporting yourself? Where's the kid? Um, he's actually in bed right now. <laughs> How do you? 
support him? Um, well, I go to school, and my parents actually help out tremendously. I didn't know they started paying for going to school these days. That's wonderful. Yeah. Oh, go to school. Not a bad plan, by the way. Good gig. Yeah. All right, so... Um, you know, so hey, don't have any. Hey, listen, Jennifer. Yeah. Listen to me. Okay. You're so lucky. I'm not in power yet. <laughs> I will. I'm going to target girls like you. Okay. I'm going to look at you as traitors and spies, and uh, in in government, I, I will look at you like like espionage. There's sort of two common ways that somebody becomes like Jennifer. One is manic depression in the manic phase mm -hmm. where the hypersexuality starts expressing. The other is sexualization of some trauma in childhood but, where you get sort of an addictive right, well, compulsive component. She, she has the former, but the yeah. point is, is I will come over there and fix you. Okay. No more kids. You hear me? Trust me, I don't plan on anything. All right, good. You sound all right. Yeah, there's something very likable. But about don't Jennifer. screw that kid up, please. Oh, he's perfect. Oh, it's a guy? Good. Huh? It's a boy. His name is Dylan. All right, all right. Yeah. Okay, that's good. I can't get pregnant and they can just kill you. See the guys, the, the guys, the guys end up beating you up, and then the girls just get pregnant. I, I'm not sure, but see, at least you have a 10 percent chance of the girls going into stripping, which then takes some of the sting off it, right, Drew? Mm -hmm. If you say so. Yeah. All right. Uh, what name is that? Jolene. Jolene. Yeah. What's going on? You're 25. You're on with Lewis Mandelar from Martial Law. Hi. How you doing? Hey. How are you? Good. I just wanted to um, say that I have uh, been listening for a really long time, and I'm really happy that I switched jobs because I used to only be able to listen to you for 40 minutes of your show because oh. I would drive to a graveyard shift, and so I wouldn't be able to listen. Drew to only listens to the first half hour, so yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> so I've been really happy the past couple of weeks. I've been able to listen to your whole show, and I haven't been disappointed because you guys have... I, Dr. Drew, I think you're extremely intelligent, and I really admire what you're doing with the um, morning after pill oh, and all you. the... And, and you're sitting in here with him. He's quite handsome as well. I just thought I'd throw that in. I didn't even hear what you said. <laughs> He's good looking, this <laughs> Drew. What's wrong with my yeah, microphone? That too. And Adam, you just make me laugh so much every night. It's just unbelievable. While I'm at work, you're just making me laugh, and it just makes the night go so faster. Thanks, yeah. Well, it, um, must, it must help to hear Drew laughing along in the background <laughs> like he does every night. Crapping on my A material. Um, well, my comment was last night you said um, it was when the 17-year-old called up and he was right next door to his girlfriend in Texas who was right. 28. And um, they were on. They had an online relationship. And we, we, said, we was, why, why is it always 15 states away? Yeah. Um, I just wanted to call in and let you know that I met my fiancé. We're getting married in July mm -hmm. um, online. Mm -hmm. He actually lived... Mm -hmm probably 10 minutes away from me. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. Did you meet right away? Um, she moved to Florida and then they met. <laughs> no, that was the other guy I dated online. <laughs> oh, boy. Did you meet right away? Um, I don't remember exactly how long we talked. See, it's a little bit different than like the people that are on AOL and things like that because there used to be a really big local bulletin mm -hmm. board so mm -hmm. scene in Sacramento. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So we used to be able to, I mean, all the friends that I have right now, I've pretty much met online. How do you right. find out what people look like online? You meet them. <laughs> but Julian, the, you, in person, yeah, but by then, you know, you're in, you know? But this is the kind of thing I, I'm interested in exploring is exactly what you've done is finding a way to make these chats healthier. And I think a building communities and, and around the sort of geographic regions is the way to do it. And so I, I think this is just fine. My concern is that people build fantasies into these relationships that are so powerful that it causes them to get in a car and drive 3,000 miles rather than to go assess somebody realistically after they've established an interest in a, in a basic dialogue online. Listen, your, your online service should not go any further than you could throw a rock from your front yard. Yeah. I mean, give me like 10 blocks or something, for Christ's sake. I mean... These poor people, they meet people who live in Minnesota, they're, they're losers, they're living in Florida, and they, there's, there's, they have such a strong fantasy life that they end up falling in love with somebody who's a few thousand miles away, and it's torture. With three kids. Uh -huh. It's torture. Yeah. <laughs> Please. Uh, you can't uh, base a relationship on personality, Drew. Listen, you don't need someone with personality. That's what the TV is for. Oh, God. Right, Drew? <laughs> oh, my God. Please, the less personality, yeah, bucks. Let's the, go to break. So the more TV this. you get to watch, right? Let's continue this off the air. Honey, let's watch TV. That's, all right, let's do uh, that's, only, that's the only personality you need is someone that goes, yeah, all right, let's watch TV. There you go. And what do you watch, Drew? Three's company. Martial law, oh, you idiot. When we get back, we're going to talk to Tom. <laughs> what an idiot. Who had three cousins at the school at Columbine. And Three's he, company. Hey, listen, he can't get a hold of them company. or their fans. Ooh, all right. That's pretty heavy. All right, all right. we'll do that after that. Ready. Be right back in a minute. Drew 
never trying to embarrass me in front of another guest. I'm trying to bring anxious. Lewis Mandelar is here. Well, let me tell you, if you could all hear the conversation we just had, whew, made me a little dizzy, but I'll be all right. Stay with me. It's yeah. always better when the mics are off. And That's great. <laughs> well, we like to talk, you know. <laughs> See, often you can't tell the difference when the mics being on and the mics being off. No, but yeah. Really good stuff always happens with the mics on. Thanks, Drew. They really know how to sell the show. And uh, the greatest part of martial law is when the camera stops rolling, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Drew. No. 9 o'clock, Saturday nights, CBS. And, uh... Check it out. Yeah, no, no. So you're on hiatus. And when do they make the announcements? When do you know if you're coming back? Well, I'm assuming that they will make the announcement within the month. They have a deadline, sort of. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll know within a, a month or so. Now, and and then they'll, if they do pick it up, which we assume they will, they will give you a number. Will they not? Or a number of uh, shows? Will we do 22, or will they pick a number? It's 12, 22. 12, usually 12 or 22. Uh, either way, you're, they're you're fine, right? If they're real skeptical at 6, yeah, either way, you're fine. You just want to get back on the air, you know? Right. Uh, gotta get, make, we got to make some money, Drew. Thomas. Hey, Adam. Hey, Drew. Hey, Lewis. Hey, how are you? It's uh, A little worried right now. What's going on? Yeah, what's the situation? Well, um, well I woke up about uh, early this afternoon um, and uh, started listening to the news. I heard the, the stuff going, all the shooting going down in the, the school in Columbine in Littleton, Colorado. And, uh, you know, I got three of my younger cousins go to that, that high school. And most mm. of my extended family lives over there. And mm. uh, I was incredibly worried. And, uh, you know, I, I just call that the, you know, say what these kids did is horrible. I mean, it, I, I can't believe it. Uh, are your cousins accounted for now? Yeah. I don't know. I haven't been able to get a hold of them or anything. Would, would, would they normally be home this time of day? Um, yeah. I mean, um, I, I, I haven't been able to to talk to them or get a hold of their parents or anything. I don't know. Well, the the phone's just ringing kind of thing? Yeah. I, I mean, uh, um, they may they be out. They may be you know, um, somewhere else. Um, I'm not sure. Oh. But it, it, it's, it's crazy. You know, I'd have to say that, you know, these, what these kids did at this high school, it, it, it's, it's outrageous. I mean, they're, their parents should be to blame. Yeah, I can't can't wait till uh, Adam gets into power, you know. And the, thank you. To, to get rid of all these horrible parents out there. Well, listen, if your kid goes on a massacre, I'm putting you down. That's right. You are uh, you are the the uh, you you gave birth to a bad seed. I'm gonna have to put you down. Yeah. I mean. Here's the deal. Hey, I don't know whether they beat the crap out of the kids or you just got some really bad genes. But either way, I'm putting you down. I can't take the chance. I don't want you to have any more. And by the way, if you're honorable, you just kill yourself, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. That's I what I like about the Japanese. They're constantly killing themselves. You know what I mean? The guy screws up and makes some kind of bad strategic move in war. <laughs> he kills himself. You know, uh, some guy. Uh, I mean. When a company like uh, builds a skyscraper and part of it falls down, the architect he kills himself. Everyone just kills themselves. The kamikaze pilots, right? Kamikazes. Everyone's killing themselves over there. I. That's what I want. I guarantee if this was in Japan, the parents would kill themselves. I like that. I want more people killing themselves. I don't like all this uh, suicide watch and everything at the prisons and the hospitals. I want the parents of the kids who uh, massacred these kids to go ahead and kill themselves. That's fine. So do I. You know, these kids, you know, they come in, and if these parents don't know these kids, I guess some reports in the news that these kids have been building bombs and have been caught doing it before, and they had all these guns. If the parents didn't know what these kids were into, they need to be put down. I mean, that that's ridiculous. You know, they they were brought up an environment where this turned out to be the direction they went and that speaks volumes about that environment it has um, to be pretty bad for them to take that it, turn. it so, yeah. just has to it just has to so thomas you must be sitting on pins and needles over there i mean wait a minute what time is it over there now it's midnight it's, later, yeah, it's almost midnight it's about can we put out uh, some can we put out some kind of a call to well where these folks are to call you um, well, actually, I'm at work right now, so... Well, how come you haven't heard from them? I mean, if you call them right now, you don't think anyone would pick up the phone? Well, I, I, I tried calling several times, you know, uh, you know this evening and, and earlier on this afternoon. I couldn't get through. All right, where do you work? I uh, work at uh, Corporate Express. And, and they know that? Yeah. And they could call you there? Mm-hmm. What's your last name? Uh, Guajardo. With the parents of Thomas Guajardo, please... I mean, the, the cousins. Please give them a buzz at work so we can know you're okay and... Please close that loop up tonight, all right? Good luck, man. All right. All right, Thomas. Okay. Boy, I mean, three cousins. 
He, he'd be freaked out if he had one cousin, one nephew, one whatever. Living, living one. Nearby. One. Yeah. One who uh, lived five miles from the school. But three cousins and the parents not accounted for tonight. No, oh, a ringing phone. That's a scary thing, yeah. So, so, why would you call all your family members and say, hey, I'm okay, I'm okay. You just don't worry about it. Uh, I, I Listen, I don't want to... <laughs> I don't want to be a pain in the ass, but uh, there's, uh, Thomas is leaving a piece of the puzzle out here. It's midnight. Uh, unless something bad has happened, uh, there's a piece of this puzzle missing. I mean, if the three kids are home and accounted for, somebody should be picking up the phone. Somebody should be making some phone calls, right? I mean, you'd, you'd call everyone everyone who was even close. You'd be mm -hmm. calling uh, football coaches uh, who coached uh, you in, in, in Pop Warner Foot, you know, Gremlins, uh, you know. 15 years ago, wouldn't you? Yeah. Let me just call everyone whose path you've ever crossed. I'm okay. Laura? Hi. Hey, you're 16. Yeah, hi, Adam and Dr. Drew. Uh -huh. I admire you both, and I'd like to first send my condolences out to all the victims of today's mass murder. Hmm. And I would like to request to the listeners that customarily wear black trench coats and fatigues not to wear them tomorrow. Is that is that a common thing? I wear a black trench coat every day. I know other people do. Why? You do? Yeah. What does that mean? Why do you do that? <laughs> um, first off, I, I am in no way affiliated with these people who did this. No, but what does that do for you wearing the black trench coat? I just want to understand. Um, do you it, wear it? It is common among people who have been asked with, yeah. Of what, of what? It's common among people who have been asked with early in life, yeah. To, to wear a trench coat. Oh, you mean, is that, that sort of... Um, uh, mummy rock stuff. Some of them. What the hell? Am I, what do I call that mummy? What's that mummy rock called, Drew? Oh, what the hell's that? Uh, industrial. Yeah, yeah. What is it? that? Goth kind of thing. Kind of, yeah. Is that the look? Yeah, pretty much. Black fingernail polish. Um. Yeah. Sometimes. What, I'm hey, not let a me, goth. Laura, Laura, you can help us though. Let me understand this. Uh, what kind of drugs are sort of typical of this scene? Um. Okay. First off, I'm not a goth, and I don't do. Drugs. Okay, but just but, help us uh, understand. I, I can help you understand. Hey, you know what? I just want to understand the culture, right? and no one is going to accuse you of anything. So okay. just um, Lewis might. <laughs> Amphetamines. Depending on what's under the trench coat, sorry. Really common. Amphetamines are really common. Um, mm -hmm. Pot is really, really common. Yeah, of course. Um, amphetamines are common among the more violent ones. Uh, um, and, and the violent ones is that is that a. Is, is that sort of acknowledged that that's part of the whole deal? Some of them are violent, and some of them are very nonviolent. I'm one of the nonviolent ones. Right. right, and is is it is it a nationwide little little network of some type? Um, I don't know that it's a network. I know that there's like a lot of people around, like all over the place, who just sort of, you know, this is. Hey, Laura, are you speaking into the phone? Uh, yeah. There you go. Thanks. That's the that's there, the there, end, there, baby. There are a lot of people <laughs> around who who dress like she this. She's dangerous. She can't even work the phone. Is there a particular <laughs> is there a particular music you guys are into? Um. The Pesh Mode. No. Marilyn Manson. Marilyn Manson. Um, a lot of people listen to Marilyn Manson. A lot of people listen to industrial music like Skinny Puppy and Nine Inch Nails. Right. Uh -huh. That's mummy rock. <laughs> like corn? Yeah, corn. Corn. Hey, those are my boys. I know. And, and so it's trench coats and it's amphetamine and it's sort of antisocial, right? Yes. And, 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 it, and in certain schools it gets kind of violent. Yeah. What, does it keep you sort of in an outcast position relative to your friends and peers? Um, no, I'm friends with very normal, intelligent people. I don't hang out with a large group of goths and freaks okay. at my school. And by being effed with, what happened to you? Um, I was beaten around a lot as a kid. And so that just makes you so pissed off at the world, and why, why participate, right? Yeah. You don't want to be a part of what, what everybody else is doing. Well, it, well, let her let her ask. She wanted to. Uh, she wanted to ask okay. if people do something again. Ask what, what you. What do you want? She want people wearing trench coats and camouflage. Right. Not to wear it tomorrow. Not, not to wear any of it, or just not to wear the trench coat. Not to wear the trench coat and camouflage tomorrow. But, right, but if you're in the military, you wear the camouflage. Well, yeah, right? I yeah, mean, okay. you know, the kids who wear it as sort right. of their own personal okay. statement this. or as a style. What's the uh, what's the camouflage? It's like camouflage Fatigues. pants or no. I, ain't, I, ain't, I <laughs> why, why do they do it? Who's that another thing? Why why is that? Well, do they? They don't wear camouflage and trench coats, do they? Yeah. Yeah, that was that was what these kids were wearing. They did this today. Oh, they were okay, yeah. but that that normal uh, the normal goth look is is just the black. No, she's saying this is the combo right now. Oh, it is. Yes. Well, wait a minute, say, There's Laura. Really no normal goth look. All right, but That's normally normal. it's just black on black. A lot of kids wear black on black. A lot of kids wear mixed things, hippie and with black, and hippie and with uh, military. 
uniforms. So is it military with trench coat? Is that a common thing? Yes. Yes. Uh, military or cami? Because there's a difference. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So like, there's camouflage stuff, there's army jackets, there's um, right, army so issue boots. Stuff so like these that. may be the people you organize. To... We may have to uh, become their new leader. Mm -hmm. All right, true. Jesus Christ, you making a documentary or can we move no, on here? No, don't you want to know what's going on here? This I know what's going on. anywhere else. Let me tell you what's going on. Here, <clears throat> kids get screwed with, and when they get screwed with, whether they're beaten or someone puts a finger in them or something like that, then they become very antisocial. And the whole deal is, is they will walk around pre-screwed, and they're not going to try. Yeah. And they will, they will pre-cast themselves out. And uh, high school is very clicky. It's very important whether you're with the the, the jocks or the uh, cheerleaders or, or the nerds or whoever you're with, and these guys, what they do is they get the, they yank themselves out of the game before it even begins by, you know, dyeing their hair weird colors and uh, mm. screwing with their nail fingernails, and they basically rebel. And they're really rebelling against their screwed up parents, yeah. but society becomes their screwed up yes, parents. Yes, of course. Yes. There's one that the society let these kids down. And right. you sprinkle a little speed, now you have real violence. That and uh, the availability of guns, which yeah. I know don't kill people, but, uh, well, gee, they kind of do. I, 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 I know guys, guns way, don't kill people, people kill people, but you guys, really... These guys, by the uh, way, do most of their thing with little homemade bombs. No, they were shooting everybody. They were doing Is most of their stuff with what? homemade pipe bombs. Homemade bombs? Yes. Oh, really? Yes. I thought they were shooting people. They were, but they were doing most of their good work with the bombs. Well, how many people... Mm -hmm. Listen to the commentary. People getting blown up was the commentary. Wait a minute Gee. now. Hey, Engineer Mike, get on the Internet and find out what, how many people died from bombs and how many people died from gunshots, would you? <laughs> and give me a good recipe for gazpacho. And we'll be back. <laughs> And uh, Madam Carolla, that is Dr. Drew. Louis Mandelar is here. He, Hello. He is from Martial Law. And if, um, I, if I may, Adam. Most other things, yes. May, may I send a quick hello to three of my wonderful employees who have been helping me this week so much? Clary, Louise, and Talisa. You're doing a wonderful job. And uh, keep it up, and maybe we'll give you a little pay rise at the end of the week. Thank you. What are they, uh, what are they doing for you? Uh, am I allowed to say on the air? Or? Sure. Yeah? Uh, no, nothing much, actually. They're just helping me reconstruct my house. You got, you got three painting. chicks working on your house? Oh, what, am I stupid? Yeah, I guess that is smart. Thank you. I want those big, fat, hairy guys hanging around your house. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> true, but I don't feel good yelling at chicks, you know? Uh, but I can yell at guys, and I only want to hire guys to work in my house that I can yell at, you know? So we get along so well. The, the best you part about construction time. is yelling at people. Well, Man, you think I yell in here? Where, where do I get into a field that I know something about? You know what the best one is? Uh, okay, here are the two top. Here are my two top yells. Um, you're not building a piano. That's when people are spending too much time on something that doesn't really matter. Like, like they're spending way too much time, like ripping wallpaper off or something. They're doing it too gingerly or right. they're being too careful. You're not building a piano. Is a good one. What's the next one? Uh, the okay. other, the other good one is when uh, I'm waiting around for somebody to do something. And they're not getting it done fast enough, and it's making me wait for them. We got a dime holding up a dollar. <laughs> That's the other good one. Uh, you may want to use that. You hear that, girls? We got a I dime know. holding up a dollar. See, you're the dollar. <laughs> it makes them feel real bad. Isn't that good, Drew? Uh, the, the, the important thing about hiring people is to break their spirit almost immediately. Sal? Yeah. You're 23. Yes, I am. What's uh, going on? Uh, too much, I hate to say. But, um, yeah, first of all, I'd like to say, hey, I love your show, and there ain't nothing wrong with masturbation as long as the dog ain't licking your toes. That's right. You know, I saw, I went to a taping of your show a couple of years ago, and some guy called in about that and wanted to bring his girlfriend into the show. Oh, uh, who? Act with the dog. No, oh, really? Yeah. Uh, that, this was like the end of 96. Uh, we doing this show? Yeah, it was that show. We, it was, it was your show. It was a TV show, right? Yeah, it was a we were TV, doing TV show. doing TV in 96? Wait a minute. When did we start doing that TV show? That was 97. I don't know. Sal, uh, do you know when the date was that we started that show? Uh, it was sometime in 96, because I remember I had come back from overseas. Oh, and, my God. Uh, 
We've been doing the show that long? I was sure, up we got to get a raise. I was up in Hollywood, and some lady handed me some uh, free tickets. All right. What, what about the act? Did the dog make it to the set? Or uh-huh. is it... uh, actually, you guys told the guy to just yeah, get his own life. He's right. Was, leave we her alone. Life. You know? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Back when we had the phone booth. I think I get a new Chris gig. Chris Hey, uh, yeah, who was the chick? Was it the blonde chick? Uh, do you know, to be honest with you, I can't remember. I just remember this guy talking about dog licking his What's toes. What's Chris doing these days? All right, yeah, true. How the hell do I know? What's going on there, Sales? Uh, first of all, I'm calling from Colorado, and, uh, you know, I like to say it's a sad, uh, non-hacking young society out there. And last time I checked, you know, we're the adults, they're the kids. Why can't we just reach down, and grab a hold, and shove these kids in the right direction? Uh, you know, I don't know. They're just letting them run loose, mm. and uh, that's 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 not right at all. I it mean, ain't. They haven't earned to do what they want to do when they start working and live on their own and support themselves, and then yeah, let them screw up their own lives. Uh, you know, but um, we need uniforms back at school. Yeah, I'm no, back with the uniform. I'm done down with that. But, you know, if I can add something to that, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but, you know, I'm from Australia. I've been in America 10 years, and uh, what I seem to have noticed is there's too many governing bodies for everything from, you know, watching over the police, watching over parents. Of course. Well, it's kids, all the, all the good this, guys are bad guys. Didn't you know that? Absolutely. It's it's ridiculous. That's why there's no control, because no one's allowed to, I guess, control their kids. And, and you're generalizing, of course, there's some bad parents hey, you're, you're out there. You're encroaching on their rights. Yeah, on the right. I know. What's yeah. that? Everybody. And that's 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 the, the crime in this country. State to protect people's rights. It's bizarre. Right. I yeah. I, I uh, I'd like to get rid of that. And this is a guy from a penal colony, by the way, that's exactly. making fun of us. Yeah. You know, and, but, and he's got a point. I mean, it, it's true. Yeah. All right. And I want I want Adam to be in control. Too. That's you right. Know, Another vote. Take care of some business yeah, without mentioning need, the gonna, Lord's name. You're going to need seconds. the trench coats to get into power. You, you know what my motto is going to be when I'm in power, Drew? What? Uh, I listen, I don't care what color you are, I don't care what sex you are, I don't care what nationality you are, I don't care what religion you are. If you're not a troublemaker, you'll have no trouble. You got nothing to worry about. Those of you that aren't screwing up, those of you who are going to work, taking care of your kids, being responsible, you'll have nothing to worry about. I'd move into the neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. That's all. So that's going to be mild. But what, the, 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 the screw-ups, they're going to have hell to pay. Sal did not ask his question. Oh, he didn't? You know, I was thinking, there's there's only two people that are happy in Colorado right now. You know what this, sir? The Ramseys. Chambonet's parents. Oh, so the heat's off there. Oh, they're thrilled. Yeah. Thank God. There's something else going on in the news. Someone else has died in Colorado. What's going on in Colorado? They did it. Uh, oh, they did it. Now. Okay. All right, I have a See? question. Well, you. maybe they're not so happy. Problem. Uh, I have this tendency, it's like every time I meet a girl, everything's going honky-dory, you know, everything's going great. And uh, no matter, whenever sex starts to come into play, they all turn into these over-possessive psycho-nymphomaniacs where they try and control me. They want to know what I'm doing, when I'm doing it, how I'm doing it. They're just and, in, they're very involved. And then they don't want me to do it and just have sex with them. And I lose interest in it really fast. But no matter, they could be the sweetest, nicest girl. But that's right. how they're involved with you, and they're afraid that you're going to leave them. Well, by doing that, then, yeah, I'm going to leave them. Yeah, but they, you choose the kind of person that's sort of clingy, and then you get them involved with you very deeply, and then you want your freedom. And they can't manage that. They can't deal with that feeling. Uh, so uh, it's, it's weird. It's like I don't even, I stopped approaching them now. I let them come to me, you know. And, See, the, uh, same, the same deal here. Them. Same Remember deal. I was talking about needing to be pumped up? Right. You need to be. You need to be like. You need somebody who really is into me, and then uh, then uh, she seems so sweet and nice, and it feels so good to be with her. We get real involved, and then I understand she won't behave herself. Yeah, and and Sal, anyone who refers to women in general is just sort of them. It, well, them because it's been every single one. I, I know, <laughs> but but let me just do some quick math with you, Sal. Since we know that every single woman doesn't possess these traits, yet it's been every single one who's crossed your path. Uh, do the math. Do the math. Do the math. I don't do anything. I don't ask for it. I just. All right. Everything, well, everything that, what are you going to do then, that. Sal? There's nothing. There's nothing for you to do then. That's You're like victim. A, Here's you have two choices. I mean, should I hold off? No, 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 no. What? Why? You could hold off for ten years, and you'd only meet the same woman you've just gone out with yesterday. Sal, there's nothing you can do. You're absolutely right. You have two choices. You can kill yourself. Or you can go gay. Uh, no, that's, a, that's Well, a, what are your other choices? <laughs> Every single one of them is this way, and there's nothing you've done to provoke them. Take more time in establishing relationships. Take risks with the kinds of people you get involved with. Get out of the habit of 
responding to your mm. usual sense of attraction, mm -hmm. whatever that automatic thing is. I agree with is. that one, yeah. Yes. Yeah, don't do that. And uh, look at the person, look at what you really want from the relationship, look at the intimacy, and see if you can have a real relationship. Yep. That, that's what I forced myself to do. You know, I used to like a flat chest and a big ass, but I forced myself. <laughs> I've, I've, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy, but I used Drew's advice, and now I go with the big cans and the small ass. It's, uh, I still find it repulsive. But I know it. I, I know it's in my best interest. Syndrome, yeah. All right, uh, Tim. Yeah. You're 15. Yep. What's going on? You have some information for us? Yeah, I have some information. Uh, you asked earlier if anybody wanted to call in and see what you, see what you know. Yeah, we're very interested about so, the Colorado uh, thing. You asked what kind of information, uh, um, what kind of guns and weapons they had. Sure. That they have. They had a fully automatic, I'm thinking. They had You're thinking? Um, lots of pistols. You're thinking? I'm thinking. All right, Tim. We, we, there were mixed reports. Uh-uh. Uh, so we watch the news, too, Tim. We're mm -hmm. interested. We, we, we watch the news, too, okay? Well, what do you want, some guy who uh, works in forensics to call I in? Somebody was there. You mean at the high school? Yes. Well, yeah, but even someone who was there, I mean, if you were close enough to see what kind of gun uh, the guy was towing, well, you may not be stuck, alive. Stuck in the library with them. Oh, and, really? And in the cafeteria, too. Lots. For uh, long periods of time? Mm -hmm. I don't know the full story. Hey, Tim? Yeah? Were people shot, mainly, or was it bombs going off that killed people? It was mainly shooting. See One that, girl? Drew? Yeah, mainly shooting. Um, there were some bombs that went off. One girl got uh, nine pieces of shrapnel in the chest. And uh, they first thought that was gunshot wounds, but it turns out it was shrapnel. And she's actually doing okay. All right, so how many, what is the death count? Do they know? There, it's between 20 and 25 for all the people that are in the school, including the gunmen. And uh, there's close to 20 people that are injured in hospitals. And there are 16 to 18, both male and female. How um, how many gunmen were there? Do they know? They said there were two in the, in the main gunmen in a group that they think is close to five, the whole trench coat mafia thing. Right, but uh, there were only two that actually were involved in the assault? Yeah, that's what's been reported. So the other three were not there or they not, were not you, there was, they were, you um, saw You uh, see, they saw them live getting taken down by the police. Right, it was, yeah. It was weird. You couldn't figure out the, the other three. Yeah. So they were, they, were uh, there. they were somewhere else planting bombs or they were doing something? I think they were watching from a field. We're not really sure what's happened. Yeah, that, that. that's all not been accounted for. Yeah. Wow. Oh, man. But the two people, guys who did it kill themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they were both students. One was a junior, one was a senior. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, and and the other how one, old is that? Not, if someone could 17, 18. 17, 18. What's that? 16, 17, 18. Yeah. Junior, senior. What, what are they? Tim, thanks. What, yeah, thanks, Tim. What do they have in Australia? They have grade this or yeah, grade that? Yeah, I always get confused. Uh, we have uh, grade one to grade six, then form one to form six. Ooh. And then we have uh, the college syndrome that comes after that, which I never got to. Right. I know it's there. I missed that one, too. But do they have, uh, so they don't have, but when you get to college, you get to be seniors and sophomores and freshmen and all that, don't uh, you, in Australia? You know, off the top of my head, I don't think so. And it's a different college lifestyle to uh, to America. You know, the four years on the dorm where, you know, you get transferred out of state, you get away from the parents, you live with the, the young kids, and you more or less live by yourself uh, with other students. We don't do that. I don't think it works like what that. What do they do in Australia? You're asking the wrong person when it comes to education of uh, the college. Let me tell you what I know about <laughs> Australia, but I think I'm, I think I'm Right. I learned it uh, from this uh, Beyond Thunderdome, this Mad mm. Max movie. Mm. A lot of guys wearing in like dune buggies, wearing like catcher's equipment, just going down the road at 90, 100 miles an hour. Downtown, downtown. Yeah, right yeah. through the middle of the streets, they're shooting like uh, spear guns at other guys. There's another guy who's got like a whirly bird type helicopter. He's flying over the top. Uh, I mean, it's insanity what goes on over there, Drew. You ever see that Mad Max? Well, sure. You'd never want to go to Australia. I, they they filmed that there, right? A, yeah, they did. Yeah, downtown too. Yeah, right? Road Warrior, same thing. I mean, it, 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 it's almost a documentary on the Australian <laughs> lifestyle. It really is. Uh, that and actually, wait a minute. There, but there's a there's an alternative, Drew. You know what that is? Huh. It's a guy who wears a leather vest. He has a big knife and he wrestles crocodiles. Oh yeah, and a hat. 
It's got the hat, yeah, yeah. with the croc teeth on it. Right. That's the other half of the population. And you ain't kidding, because a lot of people I know here more or less take that for what it is and think it is like that, you know? It, strange. It, it, it's actually it, it, quite strange. Is Paul Hogan, is he a national hero, or did he just look like a big goober over no, there? No, no, Paul's cool. He had a show many years ago uh, called the Paul Hogan Show. He was very well liked. Oh, he was? Yeah, very well liked. Very, very... Yeah, it was a good show, great show. Let's see, who made it big? Uh, Olivia Newton John? Mm -hmm. Was she the first one? Uh, who, who the big wasn't Aust Errol Flynn the first one? Oh, yeah, he was Australian, yeah. that's right. And then you got your uh, Mel Gibson. Then Mel, and yeah. I got to think of who else uh, came out of Australia. Rosemary. Hello. You're 16. Yes. Um, I, I go to school in Denver, Colorado, and I had a couple friends who went to school at... Um, at, at Columbine High School. Oh Two of them have been found. One of them has not been found, to the best of my knowledge, as of 7 o'clock. How did you how did you find the two that were found? How did I find the two that were found? Um, well, the deal was is that it was during lunch, and I was actually supposed to have lunch with them mm -hmm. um, that 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 afternoon. And so I had gotten home from school, and I was um, getting ready to just leave and, and go pick them up. And um, the, I turned on the news, and and they said there was a, a high school that was under attack. And um, so I immediately just decided that whatever high school it was, I probably shouldn't leave the house. And it said it was Columbine. Yeah. And so immediately I'm assuming that my friends have been murdered and are, are dying in the street somewhere. And um, I, I just waited around, and I, I didn't hear from anybody. And I, I called their parents, and I called their parents, and, and finally at five o'clock, they um, they were able to contact their parents and said that they were all right. Were they stuck in any of this? Um, no, they were able to leave pretty early. I mean, they they, they the way that the school was set up is that certain kids were closer enough to an exit, and they just left, and they weren't able to contact anyone because the way it was set up is that the people who were there not watching TV got very little information. How how um, how big a school was it? I believe it has something in the range of a thousand eight hundred to a thousand nine hundred kids. Mm -hmm. so it's a fairly large school. Yeah. Um, and um, oh boy, it, it, you know I, my problem is I don't understand this mentality. I don't understand where these people thought that they could just come in and kill everybody. And that that no. would be okay, and that that. No, I don't. I don't. I don't know. I think if it's they... called insanity, you know. Yeah. It's over the edge drugs, bad things, you know. The the. Well, life. I uh, I'm I'm starting to put this theory together about society. I've expressed it on this show a time or two, where I think the uh, ante is being upped in our society. I mean, everything is bigger, faster, nastier, wilder, everything. I mean, everything is, is just, it, there's a sort of one-upsmanship that is going on in this country, and it's all going through the roof. And Even with the mass murders, right? Yeah, one some, up and on some good and some bad. I just mean, if you take a look at, you know, video games 10 years ago, and you look at them today, there's a difference. And you take a look, at, you know, I always find it interesting when I take a look at something like sports, you know. I take a look at basketball. You know, you look at some films of, you know, Jerry West playing basketball some, you know, 30 years ago. And it's a bunch of guys in crew cuts uh, shooting the ball. Now it's like r tattoos and guys punching coaches and super monster jams and taunting. I mean, everything is like through. Everything keeps getting bigger and faster and wilder. And everything's more extreme. Was also, I mean, every a violence to all of this. Aggression, yeah, I mean, aggression. I mean, everything. You know, you turn on the TV, and if you see a guy snowboarding, he's jumping off a cliff, and there's a screaming guitar lick behind him, just a driving guitar riff. And, and it's not guys aren't jumping motorcycles over jumps anymore. They're like jumping over houses, and I mean, everything is through the roof. And it, there's a sort of energy to everything now, which is sort of violent meets speed meets one-upsmanship meets showmanship. And it seems to be that it's trickling down to uh, other, other facets of life. Like, this kind of thing seems like a product of today's society. Yeah. Do, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I don't know it's if true. I'm making myself no, clear or okay. not, but there's a certain energy. I mean, all you got to do is l w watch a commercial, watch a soda commercial on TV. It's like driving guitar and fast cuts and mm -hmm. everything is in your face and everyone's yelling at everybody. And it's like this really like fast paced sort of everything's getting really like 
violent aggressive. in your face aggressive. and everything's really aggressive yeah. it's it's everything is balls to the wall and it's all extreme and everything's got the word extreme in front of it it's and your it, world it's it, your world man yeah. you take it on you do hey uh you know if snowboarding's fun then imagine if you jumped out of a plane with a snowboard on and then we're gonna have uh we're gonna have a whole uh it's gonna be olympic trial sport and all this i mean everything is like in your face and uh i think if you're growing up I mean, think about it. If you had a good five years of in your face, I mean, a good five years of serious, violent uh, 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 video games where everyone's getting their head blown off and stuff, uh, you know, watching uh, Michael Jordan slam slam dunk in everyone's face, everyone yelling pro wrestling. I mean, look at the, the number one cable show is pro wrestlers. Guys like pumped up on steroids, throwing guys out of the ring. And when they're not beating the crap out of guys, they're in the microphone yelling what they're going to do to them, calling everyone's a pussy, no one's mad enough. You know, it's just really like extreme, violent, fast-paced, guitar rock kind of world we're living in now. And, uh... I don't know. It, it it sort of feels like there's going to be more of this before before it curtails itself. Yeah, that's why everything gives me a headache. <laughs> <laughs> gotta go now. I suppose uh, that, uh, Drew likes to listen to opera when he drives home. Jose, yeah, you're 18. Hi, um, I was calling to say first of all, you know those three guys that um you said got arrested that were part of the group. Yeah, I saw on the news they turn out they were just three kids who happened to be walking along and they got mistaken for people. Oh, that wow, man. they manhandled those guys too. Yeah, did you see the footage of that? Oh boy, they showed them later talking to reporters. They were released. Okay. Were, they, were they wearing the coats, maybe, and they were mistaken? Or? No, they were just wearing like black jackets that had anarchy and a, a bad religion symbol, you know, with the with the cross. cross. Bad religion, poor guy. <laughs> and, <laughs> I like bad religion. And uh, another thing, I was gonna say, you know, I was gonna call in defense of goth people because I'm considered goth, I guess, because I wear all black and I got nail polish and mm. I, I got long black hair and eventually sometimes I wear the black makeup. Mm. You know, why? So you can't uh, get a job? Uh, actually, I can't. <laughs> but can't anyway, All right. Do you work? N well, I'm... Video store? <laughs> You're what? I'm looking for a job. Yeah, you can't find a job when you got black nail polish. Uh, I, don't, I don't put that stuff on, you know, when I'm looking for a job. All right. Well, listen, here's all you can do when you dress like You can start a band or you can work at a video store. Those Are are your two band? choices. Are you in a band? Yes, I am. All right, then. Well, then you're fine. What's the name of the band? Oddity. Oddity? Yeah. Oh, that's good. But yeah. anyways, you know, I mean, just because a person dresses like that or is into that kind of stuff, that isn't going to make them go out and stupid, do stupid things like this. No, I know, but I still judge them. Well, I mean, I know gangbangers. Well, and they're not gangbangers, but they dress like gangbangers. And I mean, but they're not gangbangers if you really talk to them. They just dress. That's just. Uh, I know, but I don't want to talk to them. That's my whole. That's my whole point. I don't want to get to the conversation stage with them. I'm like, hey, that guy looks like a gang member. Well, I'm gonna go up and talk to him, find out if he's really packing or not. <laughs> now, that's it. I'm not talking to him. Well, I mean, and, and when I when I meet uh, Jose, I don't want to go. Hey, is he really strung out on heroin and can't stand uh, religion and his parents, or is he or is he just po a poet? Her. You know what? I don't care. Hey, there's some chick wearing a tube top. I'll go talk to her. That's that's my motto. You see? <laughs> True. Write that last one down. Is it chick? <laughs> chick in a tube top? Tube I top. think I'll go talk to her. All right. right. Got it. Okay. Well, Lewis Mandelar is here. We're going to take ourselves a little break, and uh, then we'll back with uh, more goth talk after this. God bless the Space Ghost. Space Ghost called me today. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if he was on the uh, Dark Planet. No, the Doom Planet. What is the planet that Space Ghost hangs out on? I don't think you really know. Oh, you don't? At least, I don't know. No, Space Ghost has a planet. Uh, Moltar and uh, Zorak. Zorak. And there are any all the characters. Are there any Jews in space, Drew? <laughs> <laughs> Hoyshul or <laughs> Nathan or something? I think that's Zorak's real name. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, his, real, his real name is uh, Herschel. Herschel Wittenberg. <laughs> oh, no, no, it's Moisha. <laughs> Moisha, that's right. Uh, the dark planet? Oh, maybe it's a cartoon planet I'm thinking of. Yeah. I swear to God, I can't figure it out. Anyway, uh, Louis Mandelar is here. He is from uh, Martial Law, Saturday nights, 9 o'clock, CBS. Oh, boy. As if uh, our schedule wasn't uh, tough enough, uh, screwballs in uh, Colorado got to go shooting people. And give a, give give us uh, folks with enough on our mind even more to think about. You know what I mean? Oh, God knows what kind of... Uh... It's a jungle, is it not, Adam? 
villains and crooks, good people, bad it, people. It, it, is, it is, and I just wonder what kind of toll this sort of takes collectively on your psyche. I mean, how many of these stories do you have to hear about before you just become a little more depressed? Or when you're a kid, especially. I mean, that's the problem with kids. When I was a kid, there was like uh, the Hillside Slasher, the Strang Hillside Strangler, the mm. whoever was out there. And, you know, I remember hearing about this kid. It was like, uh, when I was a kid, th these guys were around late 70s, something like that, mid-70s. I, I thought there was about a 50-50 chance he'd swing by the Corolla house. <laughs> I, re I really did. You know, when you're a kid, you watch the news, you hear about uh, this guy's killed 20 people, and you figure, well, this. 50, maybe 55, 60% chance he'll be around your house to kill you sometime in the next week or so. Because that's how kids' minds work. I mean, mm -hmm. they don't really understand statistics and things like that. And if you're growing up these days and uh, you're 9, 10 years old and you're turning on the news and you're seeing enough of this, I mean, w what are you thinking? Uh, you know tough. what I mean? Even for us, for adults like myself, you know, it's, it's tough to hear, but on top of that, the hometown people, I think it's double effect. Because this happened in Australia a couple of years back and when it happened in my hometown, it was uh, stranger. It was a lot heavier, you know. Mm. Oh, it did. No, when I'm trying Huddle, to... Some Huddle Street. Does that ring a bell? Did you ever hear about that? I was thinking about a massacre that took place in, I think, uh, Ireland or Scotland that was uh, of this nature. But I, uh, but maybe it was no, no, Australia. You're right. No, no, there was another one, I think, in Ireland I heard about. What, what happened in Australia? Australia? Yeah, you're talking about the guy, that, the, 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 guy the, uh, uh, the man that walked in with a gun and took out that kindergarten class. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking about. That was awful. How many kids did he kill there? It was like 30 or something, yeah, right? Yeah. Well, what happened in, uh, in Australia? Similar thing. Uh, we have a pretty busy street. There was an overpass. The guy got up there with uh, some intense scoped right. gun and uh, just started taking people out. And no one knew where the shots were coming from. He was taking people out in cars, just driving to work, taking people out walking. And it took a while for uh, the authorities to pinpoint his location. And uh, it was, I think he got up in the 30s. Like you well, said before, bigger. Everyone wants to get bigger and better, you know. Oh, boy. I'm always glad when that stuff happens in other countries, too, though. It doesn't make me feel like such a doofus mm -hmm. coming from the United States. I always think yeah. the United States has the market cornered on just bizarre, violent acts. Do they, though? I mean, it happens, I, it happens a lot here, doesn't it? It happens, every, it, it happens everywhere, but I still think we're one up on the rest of, uh, the, rest of the world when it comes to bizarre, violent acts. Except for a lot of these uh, third world world countries where they're putting burning tires around people and uh, doing maybe, a lot maybe of you guys can educate like me real quick as far as uh, yeah. America and the rest of the world the gun laws hmm. are they are they different is America the only place where you can more or less walk into a store and buy a gun or uh, to your knowledge I, to my knowledge it's much more lenient than many other places in the world especially in Europe but I don't know about let's say Africa or Asia mm -hmm. I, I would I would definitely say were more lenient than a place like uh, than in Asia, I, right? Yeah. But but not then. I don't I don't know what the hell goes on in Africa. And I, in Africa, they just kill you with a stick, <laughs> anyway. So it doesn't much in, matter. In England, they hear the the authorities say stop. Or they say stop again, something like that. You know, they yell they stop. stop. Well, the first time they yell stop, they yell stop, please. Stop, and then please, the right, second time, right. they don't say please. And then you know they're serious. Right. Yeah. yeah, they don't have as many uh, guns no, over no, there in Europe. Mike, oh, we are on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mike. What's going on? Um, yeah, you guys, you know, I listen to you every night. Um, more for entertainment, I guess, but not tonight, you know. Um, and one of the points about, you know, the kids and everything like that, um, I, I look at it as more of a problem with the parents. Sure. But um, in regards to, I mean, you know, I mean, some of the things I've heard is like racism and, you know, their whole thing where they're pissed off at the jocks and this and that. But. I mean, those are the guys that, uh, the, I mean, let's say the jocks, you know, they're kind of like the epitome of our, our school system. You know, they're the, the, the guys that make it, I guess you could say, in one sense. Right. <clears throat> and um, What's your point well, there, Mike? My point is, is okay, um, you have these guys pissed off at the jocks and everything like that. And where I came from, you know, where I'm 40 years old, and when I went to school, all the jocks were doing steroids with the... Um, coaches approval and you know actually the coaches are the ones that got the guys into it and you know I, you know what's that 25 years ago and it's uh -huh. still a problem today you know that i know of yeah well, um and 
What, so, what's your point? Well, though? they're they're kind of like being enabled in that sense. You know, it's like okay, go beat up on the skinny guys. You know. Ooh. And do that whole thing, and then you got you know the revenge factor, whatever. Now, now hold on a second, Mike. Wait a minute, Mister. It might scare me. By the way, I gotta put him on my list, Mike. <laughs> yeah, good. L l listen to me. I wonder if Mike was a jock or one of the skinny kids no, that got no, his no, ass I, whooped. I was kind of like uh, I should have been a jock, but I competed with them and everything like that. You know. All right, well, listen. Now, hold on a second. Now, uh, I hate to brag here, but uh, I was all Central Valley at North Hollywood High. That's uh, that's real football. That's not seven and a half man football that you play over there. I was a jock. I was a senior. I I started I, I started on varsity two years. I played baseball. The only thing I could do was play sports in high school, and I was good. And I was uh, I was like uh, I was an all star and You're stuff. Athletic at him. I was, wow. yeah, yeah. That's before uh, my hip got bad. I lost the will to live. But the, my point is this. These guys were a bunch of pussy cats for the most part. They were just regular guys. Nobody was taking steroids, and nobody was out saying, "Hey, let's go sh hop, hop ourselves up on some roids and go beat up on some guys in the band." It just, it just didn't exist. And North Hollywood is not some uh, lily white uh, little uh, corner of Hobbitville. And North Hollywood is is North Hollywood. It's it's as gritty as any place is going to be. And there's as many doofuses, and it's as diverse as any other area. And there wasn't a bunch of idiots who were out beating people up. Yes, as a rule, guys who are on the football team are a little bit uh, more boisterous uh, than than other guys. And uh, yeah. Uh, they might tend to give you a give you a no gear spit on you or something a little a little faster than a wimpy guy would, but it wasn't like uh, everyone was shooting up with steroids and going and kicking ass on people that were smaller than they were. They they left them alone. It wasn't an issue. I, I, uh, Mike over here, I don't know what Mike's angle is, but it's kind of a scary one. Uh, Sherry, from now on, if uh, somebody in their fourth decade of life calls with an interesting point of view, they must have a PhD level of training or greater. That's, a, yeah. that's our new rule. Yeah, the coach was feeding everyone on the team <laughs> steroids 25 years ago. And they beat up on the skinny kids. And they beat up, yeah, get them all whipped up and then go beat up on the skinny kids. I... Oh, please. Ruth? Yeah. You're 22. Yeah, uh, I just want to say you guys are great. Um, Thanks. <clears throat> I have a problem with, um, with trying to keep relationships. Did I mention I was all Central Valley League? A couple uh, times, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Tonight? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right, so try to work it into every every evening. Go ahead. But, okay, anyways, um, whenever I start dating someone, I have a tendency to find something wrong with them. So and, why, why are you afraid to be close with a guy? Um, I was... I, I had a lot of abuse done to me when I was back in my teenage years. Mm hmm. Okay. So that's a reason to not want to get involved with somebody. Right? What What happened in your teenage years? A lot of abuse. Oh, okay. We know, we know something happened before that, of course. Who abused you in your teenage years? Um, it was just. <laughs> this is going to be a real long phone call. We just let you go. Uh, let me get in here. Where's your dad? My dad lives up in Michigan. Okay. Why did he leave? No, my my dad is still around. I, mean, I, I moved away from my parents. You moved away from your parents. Uh, yeah. What kind of guy was your dad? My my dad is a uh, very disciplined. Of, he he was always disciplining us kids to make sure we did, never did anything wrong. It's just so he um, physically abused you. No, no, no. My dad never did. He never hit you. No, no. My dad never laid a hand on me. It's just um, guys that I would date would physically abuse me and. Wait, didn't you just finish saying your dad was disciplinarian? Yeah, I, my dad, if we, if we did something wrong, we got punished. How? What kind of punishment? Um, He would either ground us or, you know, give us a spanking, but... Well, isn't that hitting you, Ruth? Well, he could have used his shoe. He didn't How is that not hitting? How? How is that? your dad never laid a hand on you. <laughs> well, my, I mean... The extent of the extent Ruth? Of my dad would do is to spank us. Ruth? What? That's laying a hand on you. He just said he was a disciplinarian. That was the and, first and word you used to describe him. Yeah, and then never let a hand on you. They're going on to tell us that he was disciplined you by, by striking you. 
And that is why you then go into the world to find physically abusive guys. What an amazing coincidence. What an amazing coincidence. Adam, are you blown away? Uh, I'm floored. i got to scrape myself up. Drew, help me up. All right, Ruth, there it is. Well, Look into that. Well, see, okay, it's, it's not that. It's just I can't. I find things wrong with them. Well, good. Because the ones that you're going to be attracted to are going to be the physical abusers. No, I... I I would like to get married someday. I'm 20 years old, and I would I would love to get married and have right. children. One you got to get get into some, some therapy, straighten yourself out a little bit, and you'll have no difficulties. What about that? I've tried that, and it don't work. How many years did you go for? <laughs> for how many years? For about a year. Really? What, what do I hear in the background? Uh, my roommate in the background. Well, you you, you shacked up like a four year old. What's going no. on back there? No, I live I live with uh with a girlfriend and uh and a couple guys over here. Oh, okay. All right, well get back to the guys. Don't get pregnant, Ruth. Oh, I've already been there done that, so Okay, well listen. Ruth, seriously, work out some of the problems from the past and then you'll be freed up in the future. Okay? But don't be in denial. I know where we're going to let uh, Lewis go, but a, uh, a guy said to me on the beach uh, just a couple hours ago. <laughs> it was I was I was filming something, and this guy is a director, and he's got two kids, like two, the three year old, and a five year old, and he goes, he came up to me and he goes, you know, I I, I really worry. I I know I remember there were like ten things that my parents did, like ten days I could remember when I was a kid where I where my parents freaked me out or I hated them or something like that. And he said, I'm really worried about when I discipline my kids, that they're going to remember those days and hate me and whatever. And I said, listen, I talk to screwed up people all night long, every night, and I've never heard one of them ever complain about their parents disciplining them. As a matter of fact, they defend them. Yeah. Absolutely. We talk to people whose folks beat the crap out of them. I'm one of them. And they say... Uh, I had it coming. Uh, Daddy never laid a hand on me except for when he was spanking me and disciplining me. They will defend. Don't worry about the discipline part. It, here's what you worry about with your kids. Uh, keep the door locked so she don't see you doing something weird to mommy. That's uh, that's the one thing. And the, th the, the things that kids remember about, and I, this is an interesting question, what do you remember most that sort of freaked you out about your parents? I mean, those, you know, those little flashes vignettes, you have from yeah. childhood, those little vignettes, mm -hmm. maybe you're four years old, maybe you're 11 years old, but you remember dad and you remember mom and you remember being kind of freaked out. Unless they were raging alcoholics who really beat the crap out of you, you don't remember timeouts, you don't remember being grounded, you don't remember even being spanked necessarily. You remember the weird moments. Like, you remember, like, the first time you saw your dad cry, mm -hmm. or the first time you saw your mom just, like, freak out, not and yell at your dad. Throw an ashtray at yeah, the from across weird, the room. Yeah, I mean, you parents who are worried about your kid, it's the sort of freak out things, you know, when you're, you're, uh, uh, your, your son's looking in the closet for a Christmas present. He pulls out a, a five-foot dildo or something. You know, that's the kind of stuff that freaks kids out. It's not the timeouts and the dis. They you know, need that. It, they yeah, they're that. they're cool with that. They're and Drew, in 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 all the years we've been doing this, have you ever have we ever had someone call in and complain that their parents gave them too many timeouts uh, or grounded them or put them on restriction? Uh, and never hear that. Uh, even when they smack them around, they don't complain about it. Yeah. All right. Oh, Lewis has to go, and um, i got to get another cup of coffee. Lewis Mandalor, everybody. Thank Marshall you very Law. much, gentlemen. It's been a pleasure again. Thanks for coming in, and uh, come back again anytime. I would love to. I would love to. And I would just like that before I go, you know, back to uh, the issue of too many governing bodies. And every, everyone seems to be worried about what everyone else is doing. Problems start at the home, so you parents out there, look after the kids and bring them up the right way. That's maybe it. maybe our neighborhoods could be uh, That's a right. safer and God bless you, and uh, I'm just going to add, if you don't want to have kids, uh, good. <laughs> don't have them. We'll do that, too. All right, uh, Saturday nights, 9 o'clock, CBS Martial Law. We'll be back. Hey, Zulaman there. Wait a minute. Briar. Briar. Briar? Yep. You're 22. Yeah, how's it going? I didn't think I was going to get on here in time. Well, he is. Um, uh, how much time you guys got left? Oh, for Christ's sake, Briar! What do you want to do? <laughs> Sorry. Okay, what's going on? Um. Well, 
Uh, you guys want information on what happened? I've got, I've got everything. I was just at the school helping people out. Um, I know the guys that killed everybody. Why were you at the school? Um, well, there's two schools, the elementary school that they're taking all the students to, to um, you know, for the parents to meet them. There's still people out there, news people are still out there. They're um, giving people food and blankets and things like that that are waiting. And mm -hmm. I was just helping people out. Oh, that's good. So what? What tell us what's happening? What's the deal? Um, well, what's happening right now, um, I don't know, but I could tell you what happened earlier. All right. All right. Uh, <clears throat> well, everyone's putting down um, these these two guys that decided this, uh, Eric and Dylan, um, were actually really intelligent, somewhat nice people. I mean, um, they were put down on by the whole school all the time, things like that. Uh, they did wear black a lot, but mainly they wear, you know, boots, camouflage, unfortunately. Um, they were actually decent people. They just snapped. They weren't skinheads. They weren't um, into Nazis. Uh, they had nothing to do with uh, Hitler. And they weren't doing speed? Uh, no, they weren't. Actually, they uh, they did pot occasionally, from what I heard, but no other drugs. They weren't druggies at all, nothing. They How did you know these guys? Um, actually, they were best friends of my girlfriend. Really? And that's why I was helping everybody out, because she was there, and uh, I just got back from helping her. How old is your girlfriend? Uh, she was a senior. I know. She's a little young. All right, all right. Oh, well, that's got to be pretty freaky for your girlfriend. Yeah, she was there. She was uh, she was locked in a closet by her uh, principal. Um, oh, my God. Like yeah, um, I can tell you some stories. Well, my principal well, locked me in a closet, too. But Tell us a story. What else? Um, well, let's see. Uh, first, they started off in the parking lot. Um, they shot two people there. Then they came into the cafeteria. Um, pretty much just unloaded on everybody. Um, a friend of mine... Um, had a gun pointed at her head and he asked her if she wanted to die and she begged not to so he turned around and shot the girl next to her in the face mm. with the shotgun um, then turning around taking out other people too um, there was one guy that jumped out of a window a closed window he was shot eight times and jumped out of the window um, he's in the hospital right now I think he's still alive well um, there was what did they have they had a shotgun what they else had shotguns uh, semi-automatic uh, pistols um, the coronary or the people that are working on the hospitals the doctors said that they think some of them were nine millimeter bullets too um, they're not releasing that information right now and well, the, the nine millimeter bullets is just from the semi-automatic pistol right yeah it was supposedly yeah right but they're not releasing that all they know for sure is the pipe bombs and the shotguns yeah now what do they do with the pipe bombs um, what did they do with them? Well, where did they have them? Did they have them planted in advance, or did they uh, well, light them? And that's what they're thinking. That's what they're searching all the cars and things like that in the classrooms and stuff. Because in case they did have some more, they they were uh, pipe bombs strapped all over their body when they found them after they shot themselves and stuff in the library. There was a, a lot of bombs there. The bodies are still in there, as far as I know. Did they leave any letters or anything about? What? Uh, nothing. No. Um, they have a website. Uh, the guy Eric um, has a website. And and what about their parents and family? Um, no one's talked anything about them. Um, they're going to have a search warrant to go through the house to see if they were making anything, and they're not going to press charges unless the parents actually knew. You know. That well, what what is the website? What's it called? Eric's website. Um, it's either his, under his name. Which is what? Uh, well, why do you want everyone? I want Mike to go on. I see what. See what's oh, let you get it off the air then. All right, we'll get you off the air. Oh, okay. Yeah, what, what? What's wrong with information? I mean, nothing's wrong with information, but. It, yeah, I don't know if I can release, like, everything, but the, it is on the news that he has a website and everything. Uh, I don't know if it'd still be there, but they are telling people about it. This business about them being uh, smart, nice guys? No, yeah, I no, mean, no, that's no, the right. thing that other people... Well, are, yeah, that, no, that's, that's perception only. It's not right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm not saying they were nice, but I'm not. they weren't skinheads and they weren't goths, um, anything like that. You know what, I wanna, there's another guy here. Paige? Paige? I I met um I met them once like like in October. Yeah, she knew these guys. Um, the two. She met them once. Well, and what'd you think? Um, I I got like strange. I did got kind of bad vibes from them. Like um, it was kind of a friend of. They were friends of a uh, my friend's boyfriend, mm -hmm. and w they went to a laser show with us, and I kind of kind of got strange vibes and decided I didn't want to ride in the car, mm. which is the BMW that they were talking about on oh, the news. Wow, interesting. Wow, yeah. that's freaky. And so it's, I mean, I only met them once. I didn't know that much about them, but it's kind of scary that um, I, c I was kind of, kind of met them one time, but... Hey, okay. br hey Briar. 
Yep. So the, they went into the school and uh, they uh, shot everyone in the cafeteria. And then what did they do? Um, I don't know exact the whole details yet because it's kind of I'm kind of waiting a couple days before you know I get anything out of anybody that was there. I mean, I'm not asking any questions or anything. They're still kind of shaking up and stuff. So, um, as far as I know, they ended up in the library. Uh, people, I know of one girl that hid under a table, and uh, he ducked under the table and said peekaboo right before he shot her. Uh, that's about all I've heard. After they got pretty much everybody that was in the library, they shot themselves. That was about it. They they shot themselves. Yep. And you know, did they shoot themselves because they were being closed in on, or just because it was they decided it was time to shoot themselves, or they out of ammunition or something? Or well, I know they weren't being closed in on yet, so it had to be a, probably a pre-planned decision. And you, you figure the pipe bombs that they had on them were they planning on sort of blowing themselves up, or were they going to use those? Um, well, they did use a few of them. Um, there's one person in the hospital right now that has shrapnel wounds from the plastic. And they used a couple of them. That's why the school's being closed right now. A lot of the windows are blown out, things like that. Oh. They used one in the parking lot I know of. I don't know how many mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. Well, that is bizarre. And were, were there, did they have a bunch of people in the library with them? Uh, uh, yeah, the, that's where them. most of the bodies are, actually. The, there's quite a few. Oh, man. Uh, I can't tell you how many, though. All right, Bye -bye. Uh, Briar. Thanks very much for calling. We appreciate it, Sharon. Get back there and uh, give all the support you can to everybody. That's all right. Thanks. Know. Thanks. All right. Stay away from them young, young chicks, okay, Briar? Okay. Uh, all right. We'll uh, take a little break, and then uh, when we come back, we'll uh, we're say Briar, bye. Yeah, Briar, stay on hold. We want to talk to you about the websites. So. Okay. All right, we'll be back now. Sort of love line. I'm going to uh, go home and uh, have a bottle of sleeping pills and uh, a jug of whiskey, and uh, we'll see if I'm here tomorrow night. So until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Mommy! This is from Love Line. The views expressed on Love Line are not necessarily those of the staff, the management, or the sponsors of this radio station.